Hi everyone, this is Jason Grasner. In this video, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of ChainGraph. To start, I'll create a local Kubernetes cluster. So I'm gonna type k3d cluster create, and we'll call it demo. And while that's running, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the bidauth repo in Helm. So I'll copy the command from the readme and run that. There we are, bidoff has been added to your repositories. So now when our cluster is ready, we can install ChainGraph. All right, to install ChainGraph, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna type helm, install, and we'll give the deployment uh, name demo and the chart name bidoff ChainGraph. Now here I could, use uh, dash dash set options. Um, you can see more information about that in the readme, uh, but for this demo, we're just gonna use the defaults. All right, chain graph was installed successfully. Um, and as you can see, there are a lot of notes here about your configuration. I encourage you to, to read through these. There's a lot of information here and um, these notes will help you give it a sense for what's going on in your chain graph instance. If we look up here under the API section, um, there are a lot of notes about uh, how to expose um, your, your chain graph API over the public internet. Um, and this is gonna depend a lot on where your Kubernetes cluster is hosted. Um, so for the purpose of this video, uh, we'll, we're going to forward the port, which will always work on any cluster. Um, so to do that, we're gonna need um, the, port, the pod name. So I'm gonna get kubectl get pods. There we are. And these are all the pods we just installed. So uh, these are all the applications we just installed with the Helm chart. So you can see we've got a Bitcoin Cash node running on testnet. We've got the Hajra instance, which is the API server. Um, Postgres is our database and chain graph agent, which is the, the syncing agent that is syncing uh, blocks and transactions from our nodes to the database. And we need the Hajra pod name. And then we're going to type kubectl port forward and then the pod name and then we'll give it the port we we want we're going to do 8080 to 8080 there we go okay so our api is now available on our local machine at localhost 8080 um, and this actually works even if your uh, your cluster is hosted remotely or in, in uh, another location um, uh, port forwarding will always work, uh, so it's um, a good a good way to test things out. And I'm going to go ahead and use uh, to explore the API. I'm going to use GQ uh, in the README. You'll see this command is how you can install GQ if you don't have another GraphQL uh, Explorer installed. And I'm going to type GQI uh, for interactive and our API address. So I'll do localhost 8080 and it's hosted at v1 slash graphql. There we are. All right, and you can see I've already added a uh, subscription here from the from the examples on the chain graph website and I'm just going to go and run it so you can see what's happening. And as you can see, it's actually already syncing. Um, this is a GraphQL query, and because we've we've given it the subscription keyword, it's actually uh, it's actually sending us updates every time the results of the query change. So um, every time a new new blocks are synced, it will it will send us a new result, uh, and that's what we're seeing live over here. And this is actually completely customizable. So I can I can modify this query. I can remove this user agent field, pass it, and you see user agents now now gone. I can uh, I can add other fields. We can see some of the other fields that are available here: accepted blocks, first connected at, latest connection began at. We'll do you know pr protocol version. There we are. So the protocol version for this node is uh, there. Um, and just to give you a sense of, of what this query is doing, um, we're requesting all of the nodes in the uh, in the uh, track by chain graph. We're requesting the name and their user agent. Um, in this case, we're requesting now the protocol version. Um, you can see that uh, this is also showing uh, automatic documentation from the server, the protocol version reported by this node during the most recent connection to Handshake. 
Um, we are uh, we have a field that we've called latest tips, which is using the accepted blocks uh, array relationship. Um, limit one, and we're we're ordering by uh, the latest saved block. So um, with that block, we're getting the accepted at time. You can see it's null right now because we're in a historical sync. Um, when chain graph is caught up, it will start marking when it heard blocks because that might be different than the timestamp on the block. Um, during historical sync, though, it doesn't save those times because all the blocks would be nearly the same time. Um, and then we're asking for some block information. We've got the hash, the height, the transaction count, and the size in bytes. And you can see there's a lot of other uh, block fields that we could we could ask for. So, um, and I'll just to demonstrate, by the way, um, it's always possible to uh, send you know, either as a query or as a subscription. So if I pause the subscription and send it just as a query, we just get one result result back. Um, but I can add subscription back and run it again, and we are now getting uh, live pushes. So let's try um, let's try another query. I'm going to just pause that and remove this stuff. Take a look over here at the at the Explorer. Um, now this is actually uh, synced from the server. Um, so the server is sending down the, the entire schema, um, and it's able to to render a a, a pretty nice um, view, including. Uh, documentation. You can see I can hover over the Merkle root is the 32 byte root hash of the double shot 256 Merkle tree of transactions confirmed by this block, um, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these um, all of these fields have have documentation in line. Um, we're going to use this explorer to send a query. Let's look for a block um, where the height is equal to zero. And I'm just going to use this interface to add some fields. Let's add um, hash and header and height and size bytes and encoded hex. And I'll send that query. There we are. So we got back exactly what we asked for. We asked for the hash, the height, or the header, the height, the size bytes, and the encoded hex of the Genesis block for um, uh, the only Genesis block we currently have in this database. Um, and I'll note, uh, you know, interestingly enough, this encoded hex, this is the raw, raw block form um, for the entire block. So you can see the header is in there. This is the header, um, that 01 all the way to the D06. Uh, there's the D06. So this is the header at the start of the block. And then there's one transaction. And here is some transaction info. And in fact, I can show you that transaction. Let's use the transaction uh, subfield within blocks. Um, so we're going to get all transactions in this block, and we're going to list their index. And also, um, let's get some transaction, some information from the transaction. Let's get its hash. Um, you can see some of the other uh, the other available options here. We'll do input count. We'll do output count, and let's do in this case is Coinbase. Um, so you can see the uh, the Genesis block has has one transaction here, uh, just uh, the transaction at index zero, um, and the information we requested about the transaction has been provided here. We got the hash, the input count, output count, and is Coinbase. So you can get a sense for um, just how powerful the API is here. Um, you can request exactly what you want, and you'll get back only what you requested. So it limits bandwidth, and in this case, we've also shown um, uh, automatic nesting of uh, subcollections into um, into uh, the, the higher level request. So uh, this can a lot of times uh, reduce the number of queries you need to send to the database because you can usually get what you what you need in one request. Um, and I'll also note, uh, as we said before, anything can be a subscription. So I can add the subscription keyword and press play. And now, um, of course, the Genesis block isn't going to change. However, um, if we added another node to chain graph, chain graph would automatically sync uh, from that node. And the, um, the Genesis block of that node, if it was running on a different network, for example, would start to show up in this query, um, just live as we're doing it here. Uh, so this is really useful if you need to monitor of course, things like that, but also monitoring transactions or monitoring um, uh, 
payments sent to outputs by by pattern, uh, various um, op return protocols and other other um, uh, on chain protocols. So hopefully it gives you a sense for um, for how Chain Graph works. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Chain Graph, please check out the website. You can see a lot more query examples there, and you'll find setup guides and other documentation to help you get started. Thanks for watching.